So, is it possible to 3D print your Warhammer army? Let's find out. Welcome to Squidmore Miniatures, I am Emil. Those of you who have been watching the channel for a while know that I got my Anycubic Photon printer a few weeks back. And I didn't really have a lot of time to try things out and print stuff until last week. And since then I've been sending out minis from the printer in a high speed. <laughs> and I know one of these questions that often come up is 3D printing going to replace Warhammer and Games Workshop models? I thought it would be a fun idea to print stuff and see how it looks and can you really 3D print your own army today? Let's find out. So there are two types of 3D printers out there. The difference between these two printers is that one prints with a material called PLA. Uh, these new resin printers that started showing up last year, the Anycubic Photon that I'm using kind of set the industry standard. These prints are printed with resin and the quality for miniatures is a lot higher. And the technique that it's using for printing is completely different. And this episode is not going to be a theory hammer episode this one is going to be more about what can you do how is the quality can you really 3d print your own army the most common 3d printers are the fdm printers uh, these are printers that you enter these large spools into and they melt down this plastic and uses a nozzle and prints out all of the stuff. While I love using mine and I use it a lot, I've been printing maybe three, four gaming tables with this. You kind of get these semi-visible printing lines, especially when it comes to smaller miniatures. Unless you want to spend hour upon hour upon hour perfecting your calibrating it, you're going to have at least some form of printing lines on your miniatures. And while I know that some people are completely happy with printing miniatures with this printer, for someone who's painting a bit more seriously, this is kind of tough. Using these for printing terrain, it's really awesome. And so this is my wizard's tower, I have some other war cottages and tombs and stuff. Uh, but once I started printing smaller things, you might see what I mean here. And I could probably get this a bit better, but if you ask me, this is not good enough for tabletop level. This is kind of... If you want this painted and you want your army to look good, I'd say this is not good enough for being your Warhammer army. Let's look at the Anycubic Photon and see what that can do. And with this episode, I'm incredibly lucky to have Artisan Guild, who currently runs a Kickstarter called Amazons, to sponsor this video and send me some of the miniatures so I can use their minis as a reference for what you can do when 3D printing miniatures, because these miniatures are of some serious quality. Just look at these sculpts, they print incredibly well, these are done by real pros. And sure, you can find some cheap alternatives out there, but for this price, you get this many different miniatures. And they've also already unlocked a large bunch of Kickstarter goals. So check out the Kickstarter and I put the link in the description down below. And if you're into Amazons or if you're into female warriors and maybe trolls, they have some awesome stuff. I'm also going to show you some add-ons that they have that you can purchase that really fits into Games Workshop's games like Age of Sigmar. And yeah, just thanks again, Artisan Guild, for sponsoring this video. And uh, yeah, check out the link in the description if you want to see more of their print files. So the first thing that I wanted to do when I got these files from uh, Artisan Guild was to see if I could make some proxies for my Beast Glow Raiders army. Because some of these old models don't really fit well in with the aesthetics that Games Workshop have today. And a lot of them are made of this old resin or metallics and I just hate painting miniatures made out of metal. So the first thing I did was to 3D print these bears that's in the Kickstarter uh, to be kind of a proxy for the Frost Sabers. And this was the first print that I printed myself. I primed one of them black and I sprayed some white from above to kind of enhance all of the flaws and things that's there. And just looking at the print quality here and comparing it to this old recast resin model from Games Workshop, 
To be honest, the print model has more details, it looks way better, and just the sculpt is awesome. But in all honesty, this was kind of a unfair test because this is one of the worst models I think that Games Workshop still sell. And guys, in terms of price, uh, these Frost Sabers, sure they are old uh, fine cast, so they're a bit more expensive, but these are about $20 still, and that's about the price you pay for a hero. In terms of 3D printing, this bear here is about one to two dollars depending on which resin you use the more expensive resins up to two dollars for this and otherwise it's like 0 0.7 to one dollars for the cheaper ones this on the other hand the the small warrior female uh i don't know if you can see her but she is about 0 0.2 dollars or 20 cents and that price is quite hard to compete with for a gaming company. But these prices are only for the resin. We have to remember that the printer costs, you need to buy isopropanol alcohol, maybe you need to update your ventilation and get a UV lamp so you can cure the resin. So these are just the production costs of this specific model. There are more costs to printing with resin. You just can't calculate it model for model unless you printed thousands. And also it's a bit of a mess, but don't take it from me, take it from my dear friend Danny, the 3D printing DM. Oh, hey Emil, glad to be here. Thanks for having me on the channel. If you don't know about me, my name's Danny. I do a lot of 3D printing, specifically for d and I've even got one going right now on the floor, which is why you probably hear some background noise. Listen, getting a 3D printer can be incredibly rewarding. It's pretty magical when you see it work for the first time and you get a successful print and it's kind of addictive. That feeling doesn't go away, okay? And those highs are just as low when something goes wrong and you get a failure and you move on and you fix it. But it can feel that way because sometimes there's a lot of work involved in fixing your printer or in particular cleaning up some of the mess that comes with it like Emil is talking about. Especially if you're dealing with a resin printer like the Epax X1 or the Anycubic Photon, which I have mine down there right now. A few other things to note. Some folks are very sensitive to resin and the smells, even just having in the same room, they smell it. And there's some resins that are less stinky than others, depending on which ones you use. Even if you aren't sensitive to smell though, having good ventilation is a must. I would not feel comfortable running my resin printer in my bedroom or around children just because of the chance that they might touch it or anything like that. I don't feel comfortable with it. So just a warning, not something that I would think will kill you, but definitely we don't really know too much of the effects. So whatever the case, treat it like any other type of sensitive uh, liquid and just run some good ventilation in the room where you're printing or where you're using your resin. IPA is what I use to clean. It's a very popular cleaning solution, cleaning agent, and it can be expensive. It's also kind of messy. I use these pickling jars to make it a lot less messy than having, I used to have these two like little tubs. I don't use those anymore, I love these and I highly recommend them if you are going to be getting into them. You can just find them on IPA, they're called pickling jars. I'm sure that Ikea has their own brand too. Eh, Sweden, get it? <laughs> just kidding. I keep uh, paper towels here with me and I also have this little spray bottle of IPA that I use. So anytime any resin does leak, I can just clean it up real quick. And again, I mentioned some costs. There are costs, gloves, IPA, uh, paper towels, things like that. The biggest cost really is the resin itself and the printer. And they come in all different types. For example, this mini here from Lost Adventures cost me about 20 cents in this resin, which is cheaper than uh, the other resin, the bio resin that Emil showed, which uh, this mini cost about 30 to 40 cents with it. So definitely a price difference there. Anyways, that's all for me. Back to you, Emil. So let's take a look at some of the other things that I printed this last week. And I printed some miniatures uh, like this dwarf, for example, and I printed this uh, vampire dude. And both of these once again look really well. These are also from the Artisan Guild Kickstarter Amazons, one of the add-ons that you can add to your pledge. The, the print quality of these like smaller miniatures when you have heads and things, uh, it's 
go way good enough to paint, way good enough to use as a model for your army. I would compare these maybe to some of the cheaper miniatures that you can buy, maybe like Mantic or something similar. I know a lot of it has to do with how good the sculpt is, and I'm kind of lucky that they sent me all of these models to test print. And just look at this lady, for example, that they have from the Amazon Kickstarter as well. Like, look at the detail of the face and... I, I could do this without any knowledge pretty much. I just added it to the slicer and added some support and printed it. Primed it, sprayed some white to kind of enhance the details. And when I compare this to a Games Workshop model, the Games Workshop models have like deeper recesses and some of the details are sharper. It's easier to create things that have arms in dynamic poses. And this has to do with like the models needing support and things like that. But for being a 3D printer, like, look at where we are right now. This is awesome. And what would a Warhammer video be without some 40k? The parts that I printed looks really good. Just look at this backpack, for example. So if you're playing an army that's uh, Space Wolves or something that requires bits that are different from when you paint an Ultramarine army, printing extra bits like this or look at these heads, the detail of this helmet. And when I had printed the helmet, I had to try to print some faces as well. I haven't had time to spray these black yet, but look at the detail here. Like you can see the eyes, you can see the mouth, the beard, everything just looks pretty much as good as it can be. Once again, the, the details of the Games Workshop faces is better. I don't want to hide it, but look at this guy, for example, with an open mouth. This guy is way good enough to paint all the details on. I'm super impressed by the quality here. These heads were free on Thingiverse, just awesome. And sure, it has some artifacts, these things that I have from some of the miniatures. You can look at this face, like of the snake. Look at how detailed it is, but if you look really closely, you can also see that it has these kind of weird shapes on its cheek. But for a tabletop game, I really wanted to take these printed models to the test by painting one of them. So I took one of these Amazon ladies that's a bit smaller to see how these smaller prints do painted. And I can just say that I am impressed. Uh, once again, it's not as good as the Games Workshop prints, but like for a home 3D printer for $300, you can see I could even paint the eyes. All of the edges are sharp and the sculpt here is really good. So that helps, I guess. I am impressed by this print. And yeah, let's just talk a bit more about what this printer is good for and when I think you should buy one. In conclusion, like there are some awesome, really good quality stuff that you can get to download and print for your Warhammer games. But I think it's really important that you remember to not download and sell something that you don't own the IP of, something that you are not allowed to print and sell or upload to the internet that you designed. You can find some really awesome alternate sculpts that works as a proxy for Warhammer that you can use in your games against friends at, or at tournaments like this uh, 40k stuff. Like this is some really awesome original artwork that's inspired by the Warhammer universe and you can print it and it looks awesome and if you use one of these like anycubic printers or some other resin printers you will have an amazing result from those as well and if you want to buy one of these 3d printers like the start price is about 300 dollars uh, i have linked to the printer that i use in the description and on my website squidmar.com both the terrain printer and uh, the resin printer and to be honest i will still keep buying 99% of my figures from Games Workshop for my Warhammer games because I just love the design they have, the aesthetics and, and the quality of their figures is still better than the resin stuff. But for some games, some armies, I might want some alternate sculpts. And for example, like these Amazons, like if I had like a Chaos Army and wanted Marauders or if I did a Cities of Sigmar army, I would probably p print some of these ladies to make some archers or some a swordsman or something. This troll, for example, they look quite samey between the, the figures. Like printing a unit of these 
is a really good idea. Like, this look awesome. Heroes, alternate sculpts, bigger figures that they would look really good on the table. So I, I can't deny it. Like, 3D printing is good right now. And it will probably just keep getting better. And guys, if you want to check out the Kickstarter once again, I put the Kickstarter link in the description of the video. If you want to buy the gear that I use, either the printers or some other stuff that I use, I have it on my website. You can support this channel by purchasing stuff from those links. Uh, you can support this channel via Patreon, like all of these awesome supporters that I have. Uh, also, huge thanks to Albin Ostrom, my main top Patreon supporter. And I also have some awesome merch on my website, like this one that uh, Kim purchased the other week and sent me a photo of, just awesome. And with that said guys, have a great day.